top of the morning, friends and family. I've been breeding ball pythons now for about eight years. Am I gonna quit? That's the question. <sighs> been playing musical beds around here. And I just finished being sick and I feel like I'm like getting sick again, which is lame. I didn't really finish being sick the last time, but <sighs> musical beds. This is Leia's new bed. I'm going to make some coffee. And yeah, that's 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 the day. Let's let's go. What's the angle? Cheers. Now let's go downstairs and get into this. As I mentioned at the beginning, I, I've been breeding ball pythons for about eight years now, and we all know the market has taken a bit of a downturn, and that's a factor due to you know the whole economy kind of taking a dump recently with inflation and it's just a, a worldwide economic thing that's happening. So that's kind of without question that's happening, and uh, it's a it's a factor to consider, no doubt about it. If you are a snake breeder of any kind, or breeding any kind of animals for that matter, in today's market where pets are not necessarily uh, affordable for a whole lot of people, uh, I'd love to hear your comments down below on your thoughts on this subject as well, because uh, the more information we can share with each other, I think the better off we'll all be. One of the reasons I started breeding ball pythons in the first place is, well, I've, I've really liked snakes since I was a little kid, and I never bred growing up. I just thought it was something that scientists did, and I decided eventually, you know, once, once I moved back from Hawaii, that, that I did want to do it and, and that it was going to be fun and, and it has been fun. And uh, I really like snakes and I really like ball pythons in particular. They're, they're actually some of my favorite snakes because of how cool they are in their color and pattern mutations and how easy they are to hand off to kids who are holding their first snake for the first time, which is a huge joy of mine. So yeah, those, those are factors to consider right now. I also might add that I've been blessed to get to know a lot of the major ball python breeders or just snake breeders in general in the in the industry and in the in the hobby and become friends with a lot of these folks and uh, that's that's an invaluable part of my life that will never be regretted by me. That was a weird way to word, word that sentence, but that's that's the way I said it. One thing that I knew when I first started breeding is that I wanted to start slowly and I wanted to grow slowly and I always wanted to make sure I had extra space for the purpose where, you know, it's a big, it's a big point of advice that people give to new beginners. Like uh, that's what I give to new people that are breeding as well is like, make sure you have space in case you have animals that you can't find new homes for when you're planning to sell them. And that's something I've always made a priority is making sure that I have like a whole lot of open space for animals that will potentially stay here if they can't find a good home. And so probably one third of, of my current keeping capacity is, is open. And so if I didn't sell another snake that I produce for the next couple years, then I would be fine as far as space goes. <coughs> I'd like to take this moment to mention that there's a new feature on Morph Market that just came out uh, it is the wholesale thing where you can kind of pick the people that you would like to wholesale animals to kind of fits in with the top of this, this video a little bit, I think. So, um, go check out all the details on that before you make an opinion and about what that is. It's, there's a lot of details on Morph Market itself on the website. You can read about what exactly this wholesale feature means, uh, for you as a ball python breeder or just, uh, you know, it doesn't have to be ball pythons. That's just the main snakes that I produce any breeder of any kind of, uh, species at all because they actually have included fish now so pretty much pretty much any cold-blooded uh, or ectothermic creature out there that you might breed then you can 
do it on Morph Market. Check it out. So as I already mentioned, the reason I started breeding ball pythons in the first place is that I really like snakes. I do. I, I love these snakes and uh, stop beating around the bush. That I, I will. I will continue breeding ball pythons and uh, it's because they're my favorite species to breed. They're not, they're not super hard. I, I really love the projects that I'm working with and even if the market continues to tank over the next few years, I'll still enjoy it and still do it. And that's one of the things that I think a lot of people share this opinion with me is that they're, if there are folks out there that are doing it strictly as a business move, those folks will probably peter out if it, the market continues to downturn like this, which I think is great because I, I prefer for this to be a thing where people are doing it because they really love it and not because they're just trying to make money. And I think it makes it a better place if those people kick out. So, you know, that's my opinion. And it's a strong one. But if you're doing it just for the money, there's just so many different things you can do for money anyway. There's so many better business opportunities out there to invest your money in besides breeding snakes. So many better things make more sense uh, on a financial aspect. But anyway, um, I, I have some pairings going on right now, actually. Um, I'm just going to kind of stick to some of the main long-term projects that I have, you know, in the case that for the next couple of years, the next few years, snakes don't sell like they kind of have been in the last little while. Like, in fact, this last Morph Market sale, I don't think I made a single sale from the sale. <laughs> so, which is fine because I've got, you know, I, I want the snakes I, I have and they're all part of the projects that I've been working on. And, um, you know, if I didn't sell another snake for another couple of years, and the fortunate thing there is, is I'm a hobbyist, right? I'm, this isn't a business for me, it's not a full-time business. I, I, I'm a hobbyist snake breeder, so uh, that might set me apart from people who are actually looking to do it as a, as a full-time business. That's a whole different thing. In fact, if you are a full-time snake breeder or animal breeder of any kind, I'd love to hear in the comments below like what your plan is in this economy uh, for business because it seems like it's rough. <laughs> but maybe I'm wrong. That's, that's just my own personal uh view of the world and what I've seen from this perspective over here, these little lenses. Comment down below, let me know. I also think it'll turn back up. I don't think there's anything will perpetually dive, um, being just another human that can't tell the future. Who knows, but worst case scenario, absolute worst case scenario, I mean, my indigo snake loves snakes. So she gets, thinks it's a treat every time she gets to eat a snake. So, um, and if, if you have a problem with that, I hope you don't eat anything that's alive yourself. Well, I've said a lot of things, but I'd like to leave you with this. My prayer for you today is that if you haven't already, you find something that you love to do so much that you do it every day for the rest of your life for free, but that you do it so well that people will be willing to pay you to do it. <laughs>